This is just a bit of a bench update on what's happening for me at the moment, what's just been finished and what's coming up for myself. So as you can see here, this is Mini Arts P47D. If you haven't been uh, checking out the build, uh, it's been disappointing in some areas. The fit of the kit around the engine cowl, the windscreen was a shocker. I had to sand it and scrape the uh, seated position on the fuselage to get it to fit in properly. The engine cowl with the four multi-piece uh, pieces to it is just makes it so difficult. Uh, I understand why they did it. it. It's so you can keep a panel off or as many as you want to display the engine. But this is the basic version and you're not building the full engine in it so but it is what it is that's how they've engineered it having said that the uh details the root details is very nice it's uh Hasigar and tammy as p47s don't have all that detail so i would they're easier to build i can say that much because i've built them all but you're not getting this nice detail and as you can see I'm not doing the options out of box I'm doing a uh, aftermarket vehicle scheme that I had spare from another build I did which was that but that was the other builder with the Hatsi Gower kit and I'm doing this one uh, Miss Caesar natural metal so I had to change I've got a spare propeller out of a Tamiya kit to do this version and if you haven't checked out my Tamiya 148 F4B I just finished that recently that was an enjoyable build uh, of the aftermarket scheme I really liked and I'm glad I chose it something different with the uh, black spine and all the stars on it again it was that was an easy build pretty much but I'm not going to say it's better than any other brand. I, earlier in the year I did the Meng Phantom, even though it was a different variant. I did the Meng Phantom was an E and this was a B. It was uh, just as good, the Meng one in my opinion anyway. It was uh, well engineered as well and went together well so both enjoyable and just a few days ago I finished off the Tamiya 135 KV2 really enjoyed this build it was uh, I like to do armor it's different approach than to aircraft especially with your weathering and your painting uh, I did a just a simple base to display it on uh, with some static grass and I just wanted to uh, keep it simple and just knock something quick together but it sets off the model in my opinion I like when I do arm I like to do a base for them which seems to uh, set them off nicely so once I finish off this P47 which isn't too far away now it's into the decal stage on the way in the post, I'm hoping it gets here this week, is Airfix's 148 Fairy Gannet. Uh, I've seen on social media, heaps of people have got theirs already, but being here in Australia, at the bottom of the world, we seem to wait forever to get uh, new release models. Uh, but yeah, hopefully it gets here this week, and I will be starting that straight away, and I'll be ordered, the, which I'm hoping gets here this week as well, some aftermarket decals for it and I'm doing Australian scheme even though it'll be the same uh, color the uh, is it dark sea gray over sky but all the uh, Royal Australian Navy markings on it again it'll be just something different of normal as to what everyone else is doing so I'm looking forward to that that looks like a really nice kit 
and also those I mentioned a while back I was doing the trumpeter 132nd A4E that's still I'll be starting that soon as well I haven't forgotten about that it's uh, I have all these plans that I want to get done but I'm only one person I get there eventually but I'm definitely looking forward to that one doing the top gun scheme so I've got all the aftermarket I ordered for that now so I've got the paints and the decals so I'll be uh, getting into that and also I, I'm going to do another armor build on the side and this is uh, something a bit left field for me I'm, I'm going to do a diorama I'm going to use Tamiya's uh, 135 Type 97 uh, the Japanese tank the Chiha but it's not going to be set in wartime I'm, I've got a image in my head of how I've wanted to try this for a long time I'm going to use some uh, rusting products that I've bought a while back and I'm going to do it it's like present day or 40 years later or whatever how you want to look at it but it's in the jungle and it's just rusted out it's a rusted uh, tank sitting there I'm not doing it burnt out or anything. I'm just going to have it like it was a deserted tank and it's just been left in the jungle and it sits there to this day. And I'm going to incorporate a, I bought a set of uh, AK uh, photographer, photographers from different eras. And I'm going to use one of those guys as like he's taken photos of it or and I'm going to incorporate some 3D printing into it. Uh, I'm going to source some different animals and I'm going to just put in a heap of uh, trees, jungle and put some animals into it just to liven it up, add some colour and the photographer taking photos of either the tank or the animals or whatever but it's, I hope I can pull it off, it's, like I said it's something I've never done before but that's just an image that came to my mind, I've always wanted to try it so I'm going to give it a shot so there it is that's what's going on at the moment so I hope if you've been watching my builds I've given you a bit of insight to the kits that I've worked on or am working on thanks for watching